So the 10-year bond yield has securely gone above 4.7. The Dow's down over 400. NASDAQ's down over 200. What does this mean for you guys? Should you be getting out? Should you be looking to get in? We'll get into that as I get into the video. Good morning. My name is Adam Kahn, and I'm the Rational Investor. Today is Tuesday, October 2nd. I hope you're all doing well. Before I forget, do me a favor, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate the help. You know, the way that YouTube or Google's algorithm works, the more engagement, so feel free to comment and chime in, the, the more it helps other people find the channel as well. And you know, I appreciate you guys liking it and watching it. So if you're finding some value in what I talk about, some engagement would be great because it helps other people find it as well. The markets today are really taking a dive. We're seeing the 10-year go above 4.7, almost 4.8 in yield last I looked. Stock markets down below, down 400 points for the Dow, down over 200 for the NASDAQ. It's quite an extreme move. Um, if I thought yesterday was a little bit of capitulation, today feels more so like that. Now, you guys have to do your own research. Don't listen to me. I'm just chatting on YouTube, sharing my experiences and stuff. Um, reach out to your own financial advisor, really. But I think it's probably a good opportunity to put some money in if, if you have some available to put in. Now, keep in mind, you should have a good job, your bills paid and everything else so that you're not stretching too far and taking on too much risk. But there are a lot of good companies out there, and they look like they're getting inexpensive as the market continues to correct. If the Fed keeps pushing rates, but to be fair, when I looked at the Fed funds, it shows a 68% chance that they're going to leave rates where they are at the next meeting. Now, that still means there's a 32% chance that they'll raise again which is what it's showing a little over 30% from what I saw. So there's a possibility they raise. But to be fair, when I looked at short-term rates today, they haven't moved nearly as much as the 10-year, which goes into my theory, which is that the long end of the curve starts to rise in terms of yield. It's an inverse relationship in terms of price versus yield. So for those of you who think when I say if it continues to rise, that means the price is, I'm talking about the yield here. If the long end of the curve, the 10-year and the 30-year yield, starts to uninvert naturally without the Fed having to continue to raise rates, I, I know it's weird because I think we're in a recession. Like I, I don't know how to explain it, but I think that's a good thing. I mean, typically when the, the yield curve uninverts, it's because things have gotten so fed, bad that the Fed needs to start coming into the rescue and they start cutting rates. If the markets naturally do it on their own, I think we're in a different type of move. And I think we have a different type of recession. I'm not as gloom and doom as a lot of guys on there. I think things are tight. I think the world is tough. I think things are getting unaffordable. You know, I, But I don't think we have some big crash coming. The weird thing to me about housing is I think it's going to stagnate. Uh, we did have a big boom. Prices went up and now rates are coming up. The Fed might try to force it, which they'll win. I mean, if they just push further and further and further, eventually they'll crack things and we'll have big problems. I hope they don't do that. I hope they're not blind to what, what else is going on. Let me tell you an interesting story about a friend of a friend who has some commercial property. He did really well for himself. He's semi-retired at this point. He got into health care and has a bunch of had a bunch and now he's got only three left of three commercial spaces that rent out to different healthcare facilities. They're 80% occupied and it's time to renegotiate the lease. So he went to the bank and they said, based on the rent rolls, he can't qualify for a new mortgage. So he said, okay, then you guys can take the keys. And the bank was like, no, 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 no. We don't want the property. And he's like, okay, so let's negotiate the interest rate to where it makes sense for you guys. Well, it went back and forth, and really there was no solution. The bank doesn't want the property. They don't want to negotiate on the, the, the interest rate. And by definition of the way those types of loans work, it doesn't qualify for them to offer a new loan. 
you know, he's in the position to float the loss of whatever the loan payment is versus the rents that are coming in, but they won't allow it to qualify. And I, I do mortgages, so I understand that. The way that those programs work, the, the, the rent has to be more than the mortgage payment to qualify for the loan. So they refuse to give him a new loan, but they don't want the property. So they're this bit of a stalemate where he's kind of shrugging his shoulders, leaving the meeting saying, okay, let me know what you want to do. I, I don't know how they fix that. You know, it's, a, it's probably not just him. He's probably a small microcosm of a bigger issue going on, which I don't know if that equates in any of the Fed's decisions. I, I think the commercial real estate space could see some issues that they don't know how to deal with. And when you get into the bigger and bigger companies that kind of dictate the rules, I don't know how the banks will handle it if they can't qualify for the people, but at the same time, they don't want the properties either. So in terms of the stock market correction, you know, again, I thought yesterday was a little capitulatory. I think today's a little bit more so. I wouldn't go hog wild, but I think there's some good companies out there that have been out of favor for a long time that might be a good value at this point. I think maybe it's worth putting a little bit of what you have on the side into it. You know, I, and I would never talk somebody out of buying a house. I mean, I wouldn't be going rushing in overextending yourself. And, and I get that right now rents are cheaper than mortgage, le legitimately. You know, I have a property where the rent are left and we put it up and nobody's looked at it. So I, I see that as well. But similar to a lot of the people, I, my rate is really low. I'm not really going anywhere. If I have to sit on the house, I'll sit on the house. It is what it is. I, I think there's a lot of people pinned into that corner where what, not much they're going to do. They're not too concerned. If I have to lower the rent price, I'll lower the rent price and I'll take less for the property. I, really not that big a deal. Um, even if the house price drops in value, it's not that big a deal to me. It just is what it is, and you get the return you'll get the return on, since if you don't over leverage, you don't run in a position to where you're forced to make any bad decisions. So I also think there's a value in owning your property versus renting. So even though it's cheaper to rent than to own, I still see value in owning property. You know, I, I like owning my house. If I want to paint my walls pink, I paint them pink. I don't have to worry about some landlord. And to the gloom and doomers out there, I don't have to worry about my landlord being in some position where they're forced to sell and I have to now move or make some decision based on their bad financial choices. You know, I, I, I get that technically renting right now is less expensive than having a mortgage in a lot of places and maybe it's worth waiting but i would rather own my property i'm not looking to rate to wait but i'm not looking to talk somebody into it either so again you guys need to do your own research and and make those decisions to yourself I, the one sales pitch from the people in the industry that i can't stand and i hear it all the time and i hope it's not going on as as often as i hear it on youtube is buy now and refinance later. You know, you, you should never buy a property without really understanding where you're at and being comfortable with today's payment. There's no way to predict if the rates are going to go up or down. Like, people can have their opinions and mention data points as to why they see it improving, but markets move how markets move, and nobody really has control of it the way they think. And the two one buy downs that people talk about, I'll just say something. It really isn't a lower interest rate. Your interest rate is your interest rate. So if you get a rate of 7.5 and somebody helps and maybe the seller pays or, or maybe your loan officer talks you into doing a 2-1 buy down, your rate is 7.5%. All they've done is taking the cash of the payment difference of the 2% for the first year, so a 5.5% rate, and multiplied that by 12 and then added it to the difference between a six and a half rate to your rate today, added those two numbers together. So they've taken the five and a half to the seven and a half percent difference times 12 and the six and a half to the seven and a half times 12, added that money together, put that into an escrow account to be dispersed every month 
first year the 2% difference, the second year 1% difference, to make your payments feel like they're different. But it's really just putting your own money or the seller's money into an escrow account at a 0% interest rate. I don't know that I think that's the greatest way to utilize money, but I, I would hate somebody selling that as like, oh, you're getting a lower payment, it's a great deal, or, or however they pitch it. You know, really try to understand what it is. And if I didn't explain it well, ask. I'll, I'll walk you through it exactly. I can even like write out the number so people understand it and, and show you what I mean. But it's no different than saying, I'll, I'll put an extra $2,400 in an account and release $100 a month to make the payment $100 a month less. It didn't really lower the payment. It's just putting up cash today to disperse month over month over the next couple of years or whatever the agreement is. Anyway, again, do me a favor, subscribe, like, thumbs up, make some comments, tell me why I'm an idiot. I, I really don't mind. I like the conversations and have a great day.